All right, we're back. Circling back podcast coming to you live from Austin, Texas. My name is Will DeFreeze. To my left, David Ruff. Hey, it's not every day that uh, I walk in here and get complimented because most of the time, like we like to have fun here. Um, most of the time, somebody will walk in and people will just kind of look them up and down and be like, wow, you look like shit today. You yeah. dress like an idiot. A lot of that. A lot of that. Not me. Not today. Uh, I'll call somebody out by name. Dylan, specifically. You told me that um, – you told me I had a Scott Disick look going today. And uh, I just want to thank you for that, man. You're dressed like Scott Disick today. Yeah, my my Muggsy t-shirt, my rowback joggers, and my cap from a listener. Black hat, plain solid tee. You got some. You got black joggies on. They're joggers, yeah. And then some. You know, you did the same number of syllables. You just did mm-hmm. an I E S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> e R. Yeah, you just made it worse. You're dressed like Scott Disick today. It's not a bad thing, dude. Dave's he, going through his L A. scumbag era. You, you're dressed like L A. scum. I'm gonna go like. <laughs> dressed like you have a res at Nobu later, or the. It sucks that, that you have a, it's, It sucks that that Whoop band's not just like a leather strap. Yeah. yeah. Had I known, I would have. I would have brought my leather strap today. Do you know that he has? Do you know that that Scott Disick has his own clothing brand? It's What's it called? called? Uh, Talentless. It's called Talentless. Oh, that makes perfect right sense for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I didn't know. No I didn't know about it until I saw someone wearing it one time, and I said, "Wow, dude, that's a, actually a pretty tight T-shirt and uh, short combo." Where's that from? And he said, "Oh, Scott Disick's brand, Talentless." I get. Was this Drew? I get served ads. Of course ads. it was Drew. Okay. Of course it was my brother-in-law, Drew. He, he crushed it. I get served Talentless ads all the time. I'll be honest, Dave. If I, if I could switch him some clothes for that matching set from Talentless, I would do it. I could, go, re- I could go buy it myself. Set? Shut up, dude. They do, a, shivery. they do a three t-shirt bundle that I'm kind of intrigued by. I want to look like Disick too, Dave. See, it's a compliment, man. So you've looked into this. No, I get served ads all the time, like I said. They, okay, they hit me with it. You clear if you get served them all the time, you're clearly like at least not scrolling by them immediately. I'm like, oh, that's Scott. What's Scott Disick up to? Just admit that you're obsessed with Scott Disick. I'm not. I, I I think he's a total asshole, actually. Yeah, what's the story on him? I know he has three children: Mason Dash Disick, great name, Penelope Scotland Disick, and Rain Aston Disick. But other than that, like, what's the story on this guy? He, he used to be with Courtney Kardashian. He's not anymore. Dude, Sneaky I love it when face. it rains ass tons. Okay. It's, a, it's a pun off of Scott Disick's child's name. Come on, man. Just an ass ton of anything is good. Okay, like what? So we're just going to skewer this guy because he happens to date young models instead of hanging out with his Who's baby skewering mama? Him? Oh, I don't know. I think he's an asshole because I've seen him do some asshole things on that show. He, uh, like he's, but but he he's the like people's asshole, though. He stuffed like a $100 bill in some waiter's mouth one time because okay. like, you if I'm a waiter, that? If I'm a waiter and a, and a patron decides to shove a $100 bill in my mouth, I'm not asking questions. I'm taking that and I'm putting it in my wallet and I'm not claiming it you, on my taxes. Uh, it was very disrespectful. You didn't you didn't tip our waitress Friday. You just gave her our leftover meat. Mm-hmm. I, I I tipped her quite well. Yeah. She she took advantage of, of us, I think. Yeah. Of, of our generosity and kindness. That's fun. Um, we were having a great time. I think if people do take advantage of your generosity. Hey they, Dave. What'd you do the other night when that What the fuck? Why'd you just step over him? He was making what'd you a, say? nothing. I don't I mean, even know nothing. nothing. It doesn't matter now. Go on. <laughs> and he was constantly <laughs> rubbing his eyes. Like, he was like, <laughs> like d- it's amazing. So it's truly amazing. <laughs> What's truly amazing? <laughs> you just started a sentence when you started that sentence. What were you saying? I don't even know. I genuinely I don't know. I definitely was deep enough into the sentence that it didn't require a, hey, Dave. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought you were done. Uh, he's, I was. Cocky I definitely was. Mug. All right. I thought cocky you were done. Ask Dave mug. your question. What's truly amazing? I don't know. Not you. What were you going to ask me, Dylan? Nothing. Nothing. The moment's ruined. The only episode of uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians I've ever watched, it's the one where, for some reason, I think Disick's like hammered, and he's like looking at himself in the mirror, and then he punches the mirror, like in the glass shatters, and it's just like, okay. He's got some demons. You all right? He's got some demons. Just don't punch a mirror. Yeah. Is that like a brother restaurant to Wilman's? No. Hey, demons. It's your boy. Dave, I was going to ask what you we did other night when the, your, the concert you went to got canceled at the last second. The one in Oxford that you went to. You're, not, you're not around for the whole the one, discussion. Oh, the other one, you, yeah, you went to that concert. You traveled to Mississippi. 
Like you Travis were, Tritt. You were really pissed when they canceled the concert five uh, minutes before it started. A Morgan Wallen concert was canceled yeah. five minutes before. It's your Spotify most listened stage. to guy. We did. We checked. This oh, guy. I missed. I really did miss this. The, uh, Morgan Wallen canceled his concert uh, f- with f- about five minutes to spare before it started because he quote lost his voice. There are rumors flying around that he uh, might have been hammered at a certain baseball game happening in Oxford, Mississippi that day. It's really hard to say. Let's see. Who would that be? Should we bring Brett in? Maybe he can shed some light on this. He's the he's the king of Oxford. Yeah. I saw I saw a clip spliced on TikTok. You know how the kids are doing that. They're splicing these videos on TikTok. They're they're doing using software. Yeah. And and other things. Uh and it showed uh the difference between Morgan Walling canceling his con- <laughs> sorry, canceling his concert due to uh him losing his voice versus how Luke Combs handled it where he refunded all of his patrons for the concert, but then still performed the concert, just <laughs> letting them know that it wouldn't be as good. Um, and so he's he's getting skewered for not being as huh. uh, high and mighty. Not not high and mighty, but, but for not handling it as well as some other artists have in his space. Okay. Um, then this is on the heels of the uh, famous or infamous Frank Ocean Coachella debacle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, wow, what's going on? Why are musical artists doing this? Dylan, go ahead. What do you think? I got nothing. What's dude. up with these musical artists? I was just wondering if you still like went out around, you know, did something that night. That's all I was asking. I didn't go to Oxford. I was with you. I saw you Saturday, Friday and Saturday, really. Oh, yeah, I did see Saturday too, didn't I? Yeah, I just, I left straight from the baby shower. I hopped on a PJ to go to Oxford. Why? Oh, no no invites for any of us? No, it was with Raging Bull. Mm, mm. <laughs> they were teaching me how to day trade again. We need to do a video where we impersonate them doing their pitches. To be fair, the my guy was really nice in person. Oh, I they were all really nice in person. Do you remember like how long we sat there at that house while that one dude tried to get his like video done? No don't one knows even, what I'm Don't about. even start with me. We don't even. You talk. left Nobody early. Knows you left. Someone. I could have. I could have. You could have never seen me again that day, David. I know. I went there could have been a sting operation that ended with like a gun pointed at my head and me being like, uh, "I'm gonna get out of here. I gotta leave." Yeah. I have not committed any financial crimes. God. Dylan should... didn't get to go on the PJ. Yeah, still I didn't was... get that invite. You're still O for on PJs. That's all right, though. Yeah. yeah. Masters and Super Bowls kind of replaced the PJ for you. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I'd I'll trade take, that. I'll take mine. Yeah, I would rather go to the Masters and the Super Bowl instead of taking a 45-minute PJ flight to uh, Dallas. Yeah. St- still not. I'd, tra- I'd trade that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Dylan Shivery, ladies and gentlemen. Already got intro, fucking bitch. Huh. Good to be here, though, man. Strong weekend. Good to be here. Yeah, we're going to get to that here shortly. Yeah. We got a big, big episode. Tomorrow, we're doing Do You Know at a Game Show podcast. Some people like it. Some people question the validity of it based on some decisions that are made by the host during it, but I'm not one of those people. I'm, I love doing it personally. I'm due. You're due. You're, you, could use a, you could use a win. I mean, as long as... Music is heavily featured in the the questioning. I'm I'm not gonna do well. You are um, not good. No, at the music part. you you seem to. I don't know. I'm musically stupid. I think you no. I think you play both sides of the music part. What do you mean? Like you talk about how good Dill, Dill's faves is, but then you also say that you can't do the music part of the of the game show segment. I, talk, I mean, I have music that I like and listen to, but I, but I'm just not good at connecting the dots to them. Dude, maybe Randy will do you solid, and tomorrow will be like a Michael Bay themed episode. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't watch Michael Bay. I mean, I've seen a Michael Bay film. You here exclusively and there, watch Michael Bay films. If I listen to a song and I really like it, I don't like, I don't find out who it is, what the song's called. I just like, I just, I just it's jam. just too much work to I look at your phone. I just jam to it. <laughs> it's not not on my phone. Like you know, I'm just talking about like on out, out, out in out in the environment. You know, Will's got a record player. I do know that. Yeah, I got to ship the speakers back this morning. Can I tell you something funny? Mm. This isn't actually funny, but can I tell you something mm. about your record player? Yeah. Um, I saw a video that was edited and the the solo from Freebird was put over. It's a dog picking up a, a camera phone and or a, not a camera phone, but like a a phone that has the camera on and it's running around and Freebird's blaring. And it's I started listening to Freebird because mm. I'm like, man, that's you know what? I know it's kind of a punchline, but like that's solo sick. Really started listening to it, and you know what thought I had? 
This would sound sick on vinyl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want I to had, come over, can I come over and listen I to I actually Freebird? had my first moment this weekend where I thought, oh, fuck. Okay. I kind of get it. I kind of understand why why people think that this sounds so much better. It was the first time I really had that moment where I was like, uh, okay, yeah, this this can be better than just listening to a to it through a Bluetooth speaker. Did your wife walk in and be like, dude, what are you? Yeah, are you are you good? She hates me. You staring out the window, listening. No, now I have to turn on like a random fucking NBA playoff game so people don't accuse me of anything. Of being a weirdo. Yeah, heaven forbid, heaven forbid, we do anything alone in our apartments. She walks in, you're watching like Stars Wild. Yeah. She's like, are you okay? Are you fucked up? I'm just like, trying no. to be normal. Just, just living. <laughs> I'm just paranoid. Let me exist. I'm just trying to listen to fucking Taylor Swift. Now, if she walked in and, and me and you were just listening to Freebird very loudly, then I understand her asking questions. No, I mean, yeah, she's probably asking like, where's, where's the cocaine? Yeah, we can I have all. some. We snorted it all with, mm-hmm. our, with our noses. That's the what cocaine. we do when we listen to Freebird on our fucking turntables. Guys like us, we do cocaine, then we do a neti pot to clean out our sinuses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're just safe like that. Yeah. Yeah, we do a little mist. It's good for your system. Yeah. You got to clear the system out. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's it's okay to do drugs as long as you clear the system out, like, right after doing them. Make sure you test them, though. Like, don't, ask them questions. Yeah, see if they studied. Don't do cocaine. You don't know what's in there. You can just call it cocaine. Cocaine. So, yeah, like we said, do you know it's tomorrow? Can't wait, Randy. I'm looking forward to it. You have anything you want to say? I mean, you were pretty hyped up this morning. <laughs> Anybody else that would like to uh, join Patreon, go do so. Right now, we're doing a 14-day p- trial for new patrons. And as always, you can watch every episode at youtube.com slash circlingbackpodcast. Please go subscribe there. And you can also go shop at washmedia.shop. And go leave us a review. I'll be doing my uh, five-star review of the week on Wednesday. It's everyone's favorite new segment on Wednesday. People are obsessed with it. People are fucking losing their minds over it. I was getting some texts about it. Yeah. It's viral. It's viral. I heard Biden was thinking about shutting down the borders because it was so viral. Okay. S- Sleepy Joe. <laughs> it's gone viral. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hurts nobody. It hurts nobody. It stimulates the economy. It's time. To recap this weekend in fun presented by our friends over at Roback. These dudes crave activity and so do I. Dylan's wearing the sweatshirt right now. I'm rocking a hoodie right now. I got the joggers on. You got the joggies on. Davey. Hand up. I'm not wearing any Roback right now, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to be. Davey's joggied up right now. Hey, stand up for the people, Dave. Uh, stop objecting. So much you're working me. with, man. No, uh, they know. I wore my QZ all weekend. You can catch me in their shorts, which I've become a massive fan of. They're great, right? And their polos. I played golf. I played a little golf on Friday, and uh, yeah, I was wearing a Roby. If I recall, they just announced a uh, a female line. Oh yeah, you would ladies, know that. Ladies, women's line mm-hmm. of um, you know, athletic gear, athletic apparel. Check it out, ladies. Backer twenty works for you too. Backer twenty that? gets you twenty percent sure. off. At Roback.com. Go to Roback.com. Use 20 or use Backer 20 for 20% off your order. Just go make it happen. Dylan, what'd you get into this weekend? Ooh, thanks for asking, Will. Quite a weekend. Friday, went to uh, dinner with you guys, actually, and had honestly an excellent time. A lot happened that night. Um, I didn't know where to start. A lot happened. Can we start with um, wine? The uh, Carafe incident. Some people call it a carafe. You a do carafe. It, do whatever you want. Yeah, we we got on our second carafe of wine. I was a little inebriated, a little a little inebriated at the time. I started to pour myself a glass, and I, I stopped paying attention, so I just kept pouring. And before I knew it, my glass was about seventy five percent full, and everyone got a good laugh out of that, including the waitress who decided to pull out her phone, take a picture, go back to the bar, and show her coworkers what I had done. They thought that was really funny. It's amazing that you've been a part of two interactions with waitresses that I would put up there with two of my favorite interactions with waitresses ever. One was Friday night when she took a photo of the ridiculous glass of wine that you poured yourself. And the other one was from the time that we went to a restaurant and you ordered a frosé and the waitress simply told you, you're not getting that. What else do you want? I said, oh, I want a frosé. I've been been craving a frosé for weeks and I finally got my chance to order one. She flat out said, I'm not getting you a frosé. No, you tried to yam it and it went off the back of the rim and just flew out to half court. I I ordered a bourbon drink. and She she was high-key flirting with you, though. Yeah, she probably wanted it. Okay. Not not like... Jesus. 
Like not, she like not she, sexually. She wanted like your glass of wine. My my phone number. She wanted your seventy five percent full glass of wine. <laughs> it was number. a ludicrously capacious pour. It was. I stole that from a listener who responded to my story at DC Rough. Not there anymore. The story where I posted that photo. Maybe we'll post it circling back. But you could always follow me for content like that. Just relax. Then we went to Deep Eddie. <laughs> Shout out Texas Dives on the Grom. Uh, we went to Deep Eddie. And Dave tried to break up a fight that spilled out into the street, and I tried to break Dave up from breaking up the fight. Yeah, that was you did the right thing. I did the dumb. I thing. didn't want. I didn't want you catching uh, a haymaker from someone who thought you were at the wrong click. Well, Yo, I that's will facts. Say, that's facts, though. Here's why: I, I, it was three older guys that were that seemed like they looked like Deep Eddie regulars, versus like a car full of what looked like twenty four year olds, just just graduated frat dudes. Yeah, and. And they were saying some really horrible things to these guys. They're using also, words that you don't use. He also called him uh, Four Eyes because the guy had glasses on. Also which is, spit in his face. I hadn't heard Four Eyes. Did he really? Yep. Yeesh. Hold on. The young men spit in the old men's face? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I, get, I get why a fight would have broken up. You can't, if you spit in someone's face, that's automatic fight, right? Yeah. It should have been. You're begging no, to No, but this was towards the, the end. This is like at the very end. But also those guys, when we say old guys... They were our age, our age maybe yeah. a little older. I pulled old guy away. I said, dude, it's not that's what worth I kept it. that's what not I kept trying it. to do. And in, and you know what? What I, for some reason in my head, I see what? Just a really dumb joke. Okay. For some reason, like I think of these videos. I always see videos on Instagram reels. I get sort of like street fights and dudes get knocked out and they fall and hit their head. And like very dangerous. That's you can die from that. Happened to a guy from I'm, my I'm high glad school. the fight didn't happen. I know. And but just, I didn't want you to be the reason it did. You're that. right. You're right. It, it was very dumb. I shouldn't have been in there. Was and Dave, plus, was I was Dave like, like that ref? <laughs> <laughs> there was no punches thrown. It Dave was, got no, like in the mix to like physically separate people. And I, I grabbed Dave's arms like, dude, Dave, get out of here, man. To be fair, you hit him, you hit him the, with that, that long like cane. Get him off the stage. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody in that group on either side was was talking about really doing anything because the guy got like his face spit on and like didn't do anything. Well, the old guy, he, he like slapped his arms to like it signify like I'm ready. He was like, "Oh hell oh, yeah. yeah!" I was like, "Oh, Dude, that's God. tight." Just like, make I don't know. Just make you can't sure be held liable. Knows. You can't be held liable for the actions that you do right before you might throw down for a fight yeah. because you you don't know how you're acting at that point. Blood's just coursing through your veins. Then we went inside the bar and uh, the largest man I'd ever seen in my life uh, was. He asked me to guess his weight, and I missed it by 90 pounds because he weighed 435 pounds. He also had calves Dude, that he were – He was different. He had calves that were as big as my torso. I'm not even kidding. They were this big, his calves. Just a, an unbelievably large man. I think I converted him. But he wasn't sloppy large. He I, was just big. I think I converted him to a backer. Sloppy so. large. Yeah, I did my you know best. You know what I mean? Like there's sloppy big, and then there's like put together big. No, this, this, guy, this, guy, this guy came out of the womb an absolute wrecking ball. Yeah. He's like, nah, I'm, I'm just a big dude. He came out my like life. a wrecking ball. Man, yeah, you so when you good. say that you're not a music guy, um, and then you and follow then, it up with that kind of thing. Saturday morning, uh, saw Parks' team take another L, unfortunately. All right. <laughs> the fifth madness started like tomorrow. They're like, just not. I feel like Parks' team not winning games would be a 15 seed. Oh, my seat. God. They're not I'd have good. to vote it down. They're not good. <laughs> and Parks, he's so competitive. He gets so put off by it. He's like, Whose oh, teammates suck? Do I need to come by? Do I need to come teach teach him a, a few little maneuvers? He had a he had a sick little uh, what maneuvers? He had a sick little dribble right in I front think, of me. He juked of some dude. It was kind of dope. I feel like I, and this is this is completely wrong. Um, but I feel like They're if you teach guns. one kid how to get really good at that age, like they can just win every game. There's, you just need one kid that knows how to maneuver the situation. They're stacking yeah. L's at this point. It's like it's if really Parks can figure kid. out how to just get around the other kids and just like like whatever, but because it's just a flock of. Children. Yeah. I'll, I'll wrap it up the rest of the weekend. I didn't really do much. Oh, we went to the, sorry, the um, the uh, Weiner baby shower, of course, which is a great time. Lovely place. Great people. Good time. Would good you, would you like to tell the people at home um, how you greeted the person that opened the door for you? I knocked on the door. Micah's dad answers. And without even hesitating, I said, good to see you, Mr. Weiner. No, oh my God. And like, I totally, I what feel so bad about it. It was, an, it was a total accident. Dude, Steve? He goes, he goes good to see you. Like, he, credit, like, credit to Dylan. Dylan walked immediately up to me and just like hung I his felt, head and he was like, did you apologize? I just made a mistake. No, I didn't. I didn't know. I, I wanted to just. You got it. You got it. I wanted to step over it. You know, I felt really bad about it. I so called him you, Steve. you were AI and then he was on the ground and you were just stepping but over. I didn't want to like make it a thing, hey. so I was like hopefully he didn't like but I said it loudly and clearly. He was getting a fit off at that thing. He he's always a, does, dude. Micah's awesome. dad is the drippiest I've, dude in Austin. He's 
I really feel bad about it. Dude, maybe, you, I should, maybe I should Dylan, circle back next time I see Dylan, him. that guy's got about 70 years of being called Wiener under his belt. I, I think know. he's going to be just fine. I met the original Mickey Weens, by the way. That was great. That was cool. I didn't know, I didn't know we had that yeah. in store for us. Sunday, family day, got together with the crew, and we uh, grilled burgers and uh, had a couple ultra rights and just hung out. Nice. My dad still drinks Bud Light, by the way. I'm, I'm proud of him. I had a Bud Light Saturday. I'm proud of my dad. Shout out to the listeners that we, uh, we commandeered their table and they – yeah, allowed us to have Bud Lights, which I drank quite, quite. Uh, I just I can't get behind a beer it. that doesn't have a, a funnel that shoots beer down your throat in the yeah. bottle. It's I, just something I can't do. I tried to fashion one, but it, it didn't work. You try to carve out a vortex, long neck. Yeah, well, I brought my welding kit. Yeah, I'm thinking about taking up glass blowing and just remaking some of these bottles That's when good. I get them. It's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you, man? Um, I our played Friday, it. Our Fridays were the same. I played a shamble. No, oh, except for the golf. Yeah, I played a shamble out at. Uh, I don't like to name drop. UT Golf Club, Steiner Ranch. You went up to Tennessee before you went to Ole Miss for the the game and the concert. It was a big, big weekend for Dude, me. That, you're so SEC. I'm crazy like that. Um, you ever done a shamble? You familiar with this format? Dude, yeah. I'm got, constantly in shambles. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in Goblin mode like all the time. I, just I, do didn't, a, I did not even take out my BJs. Mm-hmm. I just do reverse scrambles all the time. Yeah. I got that sounds awful. By it the is way. awful. I don't like that at all. I got postmates and I just ate it in bed and left the container there until Friday. Tell me about your golf room. You really want to know about my golf round? Kind of, yeah. It's fun. Shout out to Blaine for having me. Um, I will say, someone not that we did not know, but someone I was introduced to, um, he told me I looked familiar. He was an older guy, and he was like, "Yeah, do we have we met?" And I was like, "I don't know. I don't. I don't think so." Really didn't think we've met. And I was like, oh, and 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 Blaine was like, oh, he gets confused for Vladimir Putin sometimes. Mm-hmm. And you I was do. like, yeah, that was before the mustache. And uh, this person said, I'd trade him for our president right now. Hell yeah, I was brother. like, well, we're doing that. Okay. Hell yeah, brother. Okay. Then I then I slowly put the Bud Light that was in my right hand behind my back mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and poured it out. I was like, Cheers. uh-oh. <laughs> So he just saw oh, he just saw liquid <laughs> pouring from behind you He's like, under are the you, ground. Are, are you are you leaking, sir? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm peeing my pants sir, right now. You sir. have a ton of liquid coming out of your butt. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. I shouldn't be here. I should be at home. Sick. Um, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Great weather day. Great golf day. Went from there. Went home. Showered. Said hi to the family. It was a big big day for me. Then we went to carve. Joined Dylan. Carve. We did the uh, the carve the carve board. Is that carve what it was called? Board. And um, it was substantial. It was a, so much meat that we didn't finish it all. And it's um, a seafood tower of meat. Got to give us yeah, pretty much. Got to give a shout out to the waitress as she she didn't ask for the leftovers. She did, but she did hint that like, hey, if you guys aren't going to eat that, and like we were going to go to a deep eddy, so it's like, well, we can't be walking around deep eddy with. With meat, I couldn't tell how uh, sincere she was when she said that. So I, I, I said, "Did you do you really want us to leave you some?" She goes, "Yes, I do." So it's quality meat, to be fair. Yeah, some prime so rib. She got she got about probably ninety dollars worth of meat from Carve, she and that's why you're like, I don't, I don't feel bad not tipping her. That was a thing, Dave. I tipped her dog. He did the negative tip thing. She loved us. You had a stack of one dollar bills, and each time you just would take one off, like hmm. she did a great job. Good waitress. We uh we I didn't realize they shut down at ten and like when they shut down at ten it's like they're sweeping around you yeah. and stuff. So Our resi we, was eight thirty, so it was kind of we were kind of up against it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize it was like that. No, I dude, I that, love nothing. I like they didn't do this to us, so I'll give them credit for that. But I love going to restaurants and them telling you how fast you have to get out right when you sit down. Yeah, no better feeling. Um, there's another group with a reservation in forty five minutes, so um. Yeah. My toxic trait is that if someone tells me that at a restaurant, I usually intentionally try to take longer because it makes me angry. I like that. And I'm a bad person. No. Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> Thank Sa- you. Saturday Saturday was tough. 
Hey, we saw a kill shot Friday night. He didn't do a sidewalk slammer, but we can get past that. Shout out to Kill Shot. Shout out to all the listeners that were were there. I didn't realize that was such a listener hangout. Deep Eddie is still kind of a scene. I thought it kind of moved to Don's Depot, that crowd. That crowd's still holding it down at Deep Eddie. Ton of listeners there. My wait, when I was leaving, some dude stopped me for a pick. Not to brag, but he did. It was kind of cool. Really? Yeah. Huh. I guess I walked right by. He didn't want to pick with me. Maybe he confused me with Scott Disick. Yeah, you're you're not everyone's favorite, Dave. Fuck. I hate that. Saturday, saw you guys at the Winers. Talked to his dad. His name is Mr. Winer, Steve, as I call oh. him. We're kind of on a first name base. I feel like I need to call him. Just like I got his number. Myself. Do you want to call him? No. Okay. Yesterday, um, yesterday was semi productive. Did a Whole Foods run. Got some stuff for some uh, high protein oatmeal that I looked up for the mornings. Little egg whites, little uh, oatmeal, some mashed banana, cinnamon. Real easy to make. Three minutes in the microwave. You're Gucci. You mashed that mashed banana button. I did this morning. It was quite good. Um. Got a little pump in, watch the stars, even it up with the boys. Just a good time. Love a 5.30 puck drop. Gives you enough time to decompress after, a, you know, playoff hockey, Will. You know what it's like. It's crazy, man. Is, is decompress, is, say, is it the opposite of stretching your D? <laughs> You're talking you just, about compressing your penis. You just push it in? Mm -hmm. We've, We've all done it. I guess if it's cold enough. Everyone's done it. When you cold punch, yeah, I think you're you're decompressing. Up there. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. About you. We got there. It was it was a low key weekend for your boy outside of Friday, which was just an absolute movie. Um, Saturday uh, went to Mickey Bang Bang's house. Uh, had a couple unexpectedly chill beers. Shout the, out to Twisted X Brewery. Twisted X Lager. Twisted X is on a heater with their beers and their labels. Like their cans were dope. Was not expecting that from them. It's Dope always, labels. Like I, I know they say don't judge a book by its cover, but I absolutely will judge a beer by its uh, label. Wow. That's beautiful. That's the thing about Will. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid. Uh, I went home. Uh, my plan is to watch the Austin FC game, and I've got bad news for everybody. We're not good anymore. Austin's for, for professional sports team is no longer any good. They took a step back this year. Yeah, yeah. We're losing to all the worst teams in the league. Uh, we're kind of a punching bag at this point. The game was at 930 at night. It's just, it, it was not a good situation for your boy. You guys familiar with uh, the holiday uh, uh, record store day? Yes. I'm new to this. It was on Saturday. And I, I didn't know anything about it, David. And so what I decided to do was I, I decided to learn something about it. And what I learned is that there's a lot of special releases that come out around Record Store Day. Did you buy a Freebird special release? I didn't get Freebird. Fuck. I didn't get Freebird. I did go check out some stuff, and I was kind of impressed. It was kind of cool seeing all these people who get really excited about it. It kind of made me excited about it. So I bought some record stuff. Guys, I know, record guy. I know, record guy. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, and so, yeah, I did that. And then uh, I'm having an issue with one of my speakers, so I decided to listen to the record I bought uh, yesterday for a long time. What are you going to do about that speaker? Sending it back, and they're sending me a new one because they're a good company, and I trust them. I don't think it's anyone's fault the speaker broke. So you just get like a 15-inch uh, rockproof faucet gate or something. Think about that. Think oh, about dude, that. I've got a legacy amp you can have. Really, Pump dude? Some juice to it. Really? Oh, yeah. So, so his dad was also an amp? It's a That's legacy. Good. That's good. That's good. It's, it's a good. frat joke about speakers. That's the only reason Dave got a bid. He's a leg. Yeah. Still nuts. Nice. <laughs> uh, yesterday, Sally made what I think has been one of her best dishes of the year. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. A little chilly out. I know you noticed that. And so what we did was Stew. we made a little broccoli cheddar soup. Oh, okay. Hit absolutely diffy. And then I went to bed okay. early after watching a little suck session. Why did it hit Diffy? Because <laughs> it was 55 degrees out, David. Okay. Broccoli yeah, cheddar soup hits Diffy when it's 55 degrees out. You got to stop saying Diffy, though, man. Why? Yeah. What's the Diffy? How many syllables in different? Three, technically, but people say it as if it were two. Different. Different is how people say it, but it's different. Let's, let's make a pledge right now. Let's all take a pledge that we will, when yeah, next let's time go we say beat the shit out of them. different, we will all emphasize all three syllables because all three deserve their proper time. I will not take that pledge. 
Why? Because I'm. Never mind. I was going to do a. Because you're a bitch. I was going to do a haze, a pledge. I'm not taking that joke. pledge. Because I'm diffy. I'll take a pledge to the fucking basement and haze the shit out of them. How no, you won't. That? Dude, these guys are so fucked. <laughs> oh. The pledges. Two of them didn't even show up to study hall. Oh. oh, they're dumb. Oh, does your cheek hurt because we put we pushed your face against a cardboard when it came out? <laughs> the cardboard? You're all burned. Oh. oh, wow. All right, which one of you guys called my dad Mr. Wiener? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, imagine, imagine the shit Micah took as a pledge because of his last name. That sucks. He wasn't a frat, right? Yeah, yeah. He was. I think he was. I think he was pledge class president, just so he knew that like none of the like. <laughs> Wait, he's a brother. He's a brother. Isn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, wow. That's right. Wow. Dude, brother for life. As man. was his dad, dude. Mr. Weiner. So he was a leg. Then. Mr. Weiner. Is there any way, like you know how like people get like, like I'm sure t like Taylor Swift has like a, a degree from NYU, like an honorary one. Like, is there any way that I can get retroactively like initiated into like y'all's fraternity so yeah, I can I'll, be brothers for life with we'll, you we'll two? We'll do it. Yeah, I want to be your brother for life. Like, could you guys just make this happen? Yeah, sure. This has nothing to do with anything. He actually just he did pledge, but I always wonder what it was like. So Eli Manning was a Sigma Nu at Ole Miss, and like I knew a couple guys who like went through like after him, and they said they would be up at the house and he would be there watching like film. I'm just like, what does that, what does pledge ship look like for your, your, you know, five star, four star commit? You don't touch very the famous guy. Quarterback. You don't touch yeah, the like guy with, right? the, with the most famous family name. He, he even skipped, at that time, yeah. he skipped pledge lineup. Are they sure. just kind of like, yeah, you don't. He doesn't. He doesn't need to worry. What are you gonna do? Drop me if I don't show up? Yeah, you're not gonna drop me. Yeah, uh, it turns out Peyton Manning's missing uh, this week's game because uh, <laughs> hazing us today. <laughs> yeah, he got a soldering iron to his butthole last <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> oh god what's wrong with you it's, oh. dude i'm different you're sadistic yeah this guy is uh different i see tucker carlson is out at fox really yeah why i think it has to do with that should that, we get him that very large settlement they have we should paid. get him dude, yeah. that'd be a good get for us he's got uh, a big social follow we could monetize that i don't know man he had glenn greenwald on one too many times for their liking i don't know if he if we're on the same wave with with Tucker, maybe we could reform. Oh. Maybe maybe we could get him to scale back some takes. <laughs> Who's maybe, watching? This? May, what if we put him in charge of something that could like be a pivot for him, like a creative pivot? He, maybe we could put him in charge of like the stream room or something. Like we could bring that back. Maybe he could be the host of Hunkering Down. Yeah, that thing just begging for a host, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. sitting there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a fungus. Maybe he could be our in-house chef. Oh. I thought you were about to do a... Uh... He's doing it. Oh, okay. You are. Because, like... Because you're tired of... of... I'm tired of just, just laboring like, over these meals all the time. Right. Like, what if there was just a way to eat cheaply and, you know, save money on food just this spring? Wouldn't that be great? I always think about that, yeah. I got good news for Tucker Carlson and everybody else. Get more bang for your bite with America's best value meal kit. Every plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping with no hidden fees, so you can count on great value week after week. Plus, only pay what you need with pre-portioned ingredients. Get the most out of your cooking with Big Batch Faves, which is every plate's new selection of hearty meals for perfect that's perfect for big gatherings. You can let your slow cooker do most of the work and enjoy comfortable filling dishes like Tex-Mex black bean chili and beef bolognese. Mm. We get every plate boxes to our place pretty much all the time. And every time they uh, arrive, I know that I'm gonna be eating absolutely good for the week. And I know that it's nice because I don't have to go to the grocery store. And I know that I'm gonna be spending a lot less than I would be if I did go to the grocery store. You can choose every plate over takeout and save money while still enjoying quick, satisfying meals. Their meals are 50% cheaper than your average fast, casual meal. Plus, you can put that money that you save towards making plans for warmer weather. This is, it's a win-win situation, you guys. You can even customize your every plate meals to your liking with options to swap proteins, sides, or add a protein or vegetable to dishes each week. You can do you. Still nuts. Catch me adding protein. Oh, okay. Gain season? Yeah, lifting weights. Yeah. This guy lifts. Yeah. I didn't really mean to take the steam out of that read. Sorry. No, it's I just okay, wanted David. to point out I've done that. You don't, you're not taking the steam out of everything. In fact, you could be putting the steam into it with these veggie dishes that you can even get each week. <laughs> That's a pro right there. <sighs> Welcome to the steam room. That's what the steam sounds like, Dylan. 
much. No, but seriously, I love this stuff. You can get $1.49 meals by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code STEAM149. Like I said, get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering code STEAM149. That's up to $110 value. Pretty good. Very good. Day. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think it's time for a little succession talk. Why are you yeah, saying Yeah, your emphasis like that. is a little iffy there. It's a, it's a horny emphasis you're doing there. I don't sir. even. I truly don't even you know, know what you guys are talking about. You've been a little horny the last week. I got to tell you. I don't mean to call you out publicly, but That's, we do a podcast and I'm calling wow. you out. It's a big some, compliment from, from, from the guy in the horny chair. Your girl over for a suck session. I don't know. Oh, that. Oh, that's what you guys were alluding to when I said succession, and we're going to recap it. Like I just thought we were talking about the show from last I night. I apologize to everyone who just heard me say that. I don't. I'm, I'm not like that. Season four, episode five. It's called Kill List. Love Ooh. the episode. I think it was one of the more fun episodes of the year. Love the, the change of scenery. The setting was fun. The, it, I love Succession. One of my favorite shows. Uh, one thing that they don't do enough of is change settings for me. They need to change settings pretty much every single episode for me to keep me happy. Sometimes it's in uh, a $63 million uh, apartment. In Manhattan. In Manhattan. I just get bummed sometimes when like you're 45 minutes into an episode of Succession and they've been sitting in the same room the entire time. And you're like, you know, I respect how good of a job you're doing acting to where like it really doesn't matter that you're in the same room. But sometimes I just want to see baller locations. So this one was in Norway. Uh, ever been? I have not been in Norway. wonder where they filmed it. Norway. Yeah, yeah I think Norway. I don't know. It could have been... Uh, Oregon. Yeah, it looked Pacific Northwesty to me too. It's very beautiful. That's why I asked. It was. Pretty dope little setup. Um, I don't know what you call the place that... It was like a... Almost a like retreat? A, sure. And, and at the top of the... There's a mountain. And at the top of it was some like you know, observatory lookout thing almost. It was just a building. And every time they talked business, they would take the gondola up to talk business and then they'd come down and like talk to, talk it out with the other people and then you ever, they'd go uh, back up to talk more business on the gondola. You ever talk business on a gondola? I don't think I have. I've I've taken many gondolas, however. Yeah, I did that one time when I went skiing with y'all. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You would have closed your eyes that one time we did it because you were scared. When, when, it gets, when it gets real high... Yeah, I get I get a little scared. I don't close my eyes, but I do I, heights. I don't do heights, buddy. You hear me? Yeah. Don't you think you're gonna pee yourself or something? No, that's when I get too high. Got it. Not the same thing. Off that stick. Do you really? So you are that scared of heights? On like so you're on a gondola, you're like, uh oh. Um, it 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 depends how high it is off the ground. It, you know. So skydiving's out of the question. For oh my you. god, I am terrified of heights. I can't even watch a video of someone like up on a. Tall okay, building. so no skydiving. What about Rocky Mountain climbing? It's way harder to look at videos of those dudes that are like thrill seekers that are on the edge of like skyscrapers in Dubai doing parkour stuff. Oh, it's yeah. way harder for me to watch that than it is for someone to be in a plane jumping out of the plane. Ooh. It's almost yeah, like totally so high agree. that I have no concept. To totally that. agree. Hmm. I would I would skydive. There's this video of some dude who's changing the the light bulb on the top of a tower that's like thousand feet tall, uh -huh. and he climbs all the way up, and every. Every time he takes a step, he like reclips himself in. It's terrifying. Do they not know that they have light bulbs that can last forever? Thomas Edison figured Great that out. Great fucking question, Will. Uh, can I give a special nod? I'm going to give a very special nod to Kieran Culkin. I thought his performance last night, especially during the time when he tried to undress, uh, what's his face? Uh, you Edison. Know, I thought he did an absolutely incredible job of seeming so genuine in that moment that I was like, dude, that was that's the best he's ever been on this show. Do you think... Do you think he was genuinely tearing into him, or think that was all strategy? That was the real. That, I, I think don't that think was it was the real Roman. That's the real Roman. Yeah, I think I that was so like too. that's he not finally, strategy. He finally broke. It yeah. was just like, all right, the facade of all the smartassness, all that. This is it. I'm fucking tired of this guy. And everything he said seemed very legitimate. Couldn't wait a few fucking days, huh? Yeah, that would be enough for me not to want to work with somebody. At all. Yeah, you insist that we fly to Norway yeah. the day after uh, the, our father's funeral or whatever. If my dad died and I was going to get, like, the company, and I was working on a merger with somebody else, and we were, or whatever you want to call it, uh, I'd agree. be like, uh, you're flying here now. You want to buy my company? You want me to accept your offer? You can fly here, and you can fucking yeah, figure that out. Before they flew out, they still were in a... They weren't in the power position, I don't think. I think Matson was still in the power position, because he's the one writing the check, and he was... They were wondering if he was going to want to back out the deal and all that. So 
it's understandable that well they would be the ones to fly out. Okay, Dylan siding with Madsen. Noted. I'm just saying. Well, they had the Madsen sense. had the leverage, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dylan Madsen, go. go. ATN getting folded in. A lot of ladies on the TL. Apparently, Madsen gals. The scars guard guy, very hot. He's he's a tall, hot man who sends his ex girlfriend pints of blood. What I I I honestly had to run that back because I was like, whoa, 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 did I miss, dude? That I think that was a moment where they were. They were spitballing during the, the the filming of it, and then he just said that, and they're like, "Okay, keep going with that." Yeah, That's I like to fun. think that Shiv and Tom's little back and forth was—I uh, I don't know if it was improv, but it just seemed—it seemed, seemed like it could have been a good scene for like outtakes and stuff. It was ex that was an excellent dialogue scene. Well, Do we want them back together? No, she—I think she kind of wants it to. She asked him on a date or to dinner. Well, yeah. If you if you're pregnant with this kid, like I would assume you, there's part of you that's gonna be like, well, she I saved him. Make this I happen. feel like she's kind of like are we more sure attracted to him now. Are we sure she's still pregnant? Yeah. I think right. So okay. She was drinking and she almost did cocaine. <laughs> she took one sip on the on screen that we saw. One sip. Okay. And she did not do any cocaine. She put it away immediately. Do you think that picture that Madsen asked Ship to take on the plane of He's an idiot, or she's an idiot. Kendall Nicholas. and Roman's reactions will come back to bite anyone 100%. in the ass at some point. 100%. Why were you communicating with Madsen while we were in shambles we were over, negotiating. yeah, like over all of this? And you're taking photos of us and sending them to the guy that we're negotiating against? Like, fuck you. Oh, it's, yeah. it's going to come out that she was, she orchestrated, helped orchestrate that. Yeah. The, the, the photo part was a, it's a perfect, it's a perfect way to expose her for this. But she also, like, <laughs> If you listen to the uh, rumored kill list that they read out, like those are all people. Like she saved, she saved the women. She saved J saved Jerry and uh, Carolina, the brunette. Uh, she saved Tom. So it's like, oh, okay, she's working. What did, what did she do to save Tom? I don't remember her talking to Matson about him. That's well, it's, yeah, it's implied that it like, is? yeah, it's the implication. Because of the implication. Oh, okay. So I didn't get that either, to be honest. I, I figured I figured I missed something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I know that she went to bat for Carolina, and I guess you mentioned Jerry too. Jerry could be helpful in a situation like a blood giving situation. What you've done uh, here? Okay. You ever sent your ex some blood? I haven't, but that's a move I might try in the half future. a liter. Actually, was the number right? She brick a half liter brick of blood is what he said. I didn't. I sent an ear one time. Really? Yeah, I was kind of going through a phase. I was painting a lot. It's a that's a Van Gogh reference. Wasn't your commenter name Vincent Van Bro? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Dorn. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> weird, weird Kendall episode. He like. Weirdly, didn't I mean he had it and he didn't have it, and then he kind of bricked it. He looked on, he looked shook. The whole everything about it shook him. We're not getting Pete Kendall this season like I thought we would. I thought he would, he was going to alpha that meeting, and he did not. We've said this before, though. Like I feel like I've been in this spot before, being like I want more from Kendall, and then suddenly Kendall turns it on to finish out the season. So I, you know, I got, I got to be a little light on kills a guy. Do we have any Kinda. idea how many shares are dispersed between the, all these characters when they say when they when they get the the price Aren't bumped even, up 5 bucks? I want to know how much that affects their like actual payout amount. An absolute fuck ton or yeah. ass ton, well. Thank you. An ass ton of shares. Yeah. yeah. That's what we try to do every day, watch media. Share ass. No, no, no just no. getting an ass ton of shares. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. True. On on the yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Hey, which one who's going to did you guys decide which one of you is going to run the uh, Washed Babes account that we're going to do? It's Randy, Dave, right? Dave volunteered. To Randy do it. came in this morning like, guys, Washed Babes, you're going to love this. Wait, would Washed Babes even be hot, or are they like they used to be hot, and now they're just like, okay, she looks okay, you know, because washed. I don't know. You're going to have to figure that out for, for okay. when you start. Running That's a account. funny concept. Unfortunately, I don't think it would, it would get a lot of follows because, you know, you could just go follow like smoke shows or something. What if it's like babes standing in front of car washes? Washed rocket ships. Okay, I'm listening. So that would just be a bunch of really clean looking rocket ships. Be sick. How about Elon, huh? We just hype up washed rockets. Shutterstock babe of the day. 
That was good. That was, that was good. good. That was funny. That was good. That was really fun. Under underappreciated. Yeah. Are you guys bummed that that Elon's ship or whatever exploded? No, I don't care. His rocket. No one was on it, so I don't care. Honestly, if you're gonna take away our check marks, like you kind of deserve to have something blow up oh. that day. You can't do both. You can't. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Can I? Uh, Justice. Can I just, as an aside, give give uh, a tip of the cap to Elon? Because it is kind of hilarious to um, give people keep people who did not ask for or pay for Twitter Blue check marks, so it looks like they did. And uh, he knew it was going to come out, but it was still pretty funny. We're like people who like obviously didn't like him. Who did he give it to? Like Stephen, Stephen King, King was, was one. one. Uh, LeBron. LeBron. Oh, because ever yeah, he got roasted. There were you know, a, quite a few like notable public figures. Uh, the Drill account. I'm not. I'm not giving any credit. Forward. I'm not giving any credit to his nerd humor. As far as Elon humor goes, that's one of the better bits. And he probably wasn't even doing it to be funny. It just to me was funny. Because it is, if you think that's kind of funny, it's like I, this guy paid for it. There's a theory that he, like he gave it to people so us like commoners will look at it like, oh, if he's gonna pay for it, then maybe I should too. Nothing could nothing could sway yeah. me at this point. No, I'm out. Like I know I put I put up the poll. I'm the one. It's me. Hi, I'm the pollster. It's me. Uh, I put it up <laughs> on Circling Back Pod on on Twitter. Please go follow. Uh, and I was landslide voted most likely to pay for Twitter Blue. I, I actually think it's Dylan who's most likely to pay for Twitter Blue. If I had to vote in that poll, nah. Uh, there's absolutely no way I ever vote or ever do it for Twitter. Blue. I'm not doing it. Not doing it. Stop asking. I'm I not might doing do it, it as a bit. What if you just publicly hate Elon and then he just does it for you and you don't have to actually pay? I genuinely find the the people who tweet forty times a day about Elon sucking. Like more annoying than Elon I, on Twitter, because I don't see his tweets anymore. Did yeah, I yeah, unfollow yeah. him. If you're if you're one of those annoying people, like just go complain about it on your podcast instead of tweeting about it. Yes. Like I do. Like that's 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 the easy way out. I don't follow. That's probably why I don't see his tweets anymore. <laughs> Dude, so. why don't you super subscribe to him? That's how you get exclusive memes. Yeah, that'd be cool. You can get the exclusive access to his exclusive memes. Has he tweeted about the cow mutilations in Madisonville, Texas yet? We done with the succession? I don't have anything more on it. I thought it was a really good episode. I thought that I thought uh, Cousin Greg trying to make the quad squad happen, uh, incredible. Okay, yeah. so he's pretty much got one like every other episode. It's, if it's not the, the Disgusting Brothers, it's the quad squad. He had season two. Like, they, they know, like, okay. He's, Greg's the most likable person on the show. Like, Greg had no reason going on that trip. But you can't not include Greg. Because I think he's just about a that a lot character. with him. Like, like he's, is he's he a, really worthy of he's being a in nobody? A, like in the company, he's pretty much a nobody. He's Tom's. He's right under Tom, or his Tom's number two. He's like, Tom's Tom, fall guy. Tom didn't even have to go on that trip. Long games? Like he didn't. Like he wasn't a part of the discussion. He wasn't part of the negotiation. He was just there. So why would Greg? Like you know what I mean? Like he's so good of, of a character. They had. He's got to be there. When Tom sat down at the table with uh, Mastin and the other, um, his. Employees, the other Swedes. <laughs> um, those Swedes were, or the the whoever they, those guys sucked. Are you Swedish? I think they all are. Oh, that's a Swedish a meat ball. Anyway, what were you gonna say? It was very intimidating. Yeah, yeah that would and suck. he 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 completely like he bricked it. He has a he. They asked him a question that if I were asked a question, I would have no idea what to say. Is France gonna make it? Like, how do you answer that question? It was very odd. Nothing. I think they're going to make it. Yeah, probably. That's just me. That's just me. I don't know. I think there's other countries we should be worrying about a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But again, that's just me. Did you guys did you guys look up what they said when they were speaking in a foreign language? No, did you? Uh, I saw someone post a screenshot of the... Uh, the subtitles and it essentially just said like have we gone into business with an incestuous family okay. whatever okay well it's a big dick move from madsen to be like really all of you are going to come negotiate with me and not just like you know one or two of you uh, it's just me did you catch when he said he did psilocybin in the morning sometimes psilocybin yeah with breakfast yes it's such a tech ceo move gotta love it dude he's frat Let's talk about this cow mutilation story out of Madisonville, Texas. 
Not what you want. I'm freaked out, man. Six cows found dead and mutilated along a state highway in East Central Texas, Madisonville, down around, uh, oh, I don't know, east of College Station Way. Out oh, College Station Way. Complete, uh, have their tongues completely removed. It's prompted an investigation by a county sheriff's office, as it should. That's not the only thing that was done to the cows, Dave. The cow's tongue was removed with, weirdly, no blood spill and a straight, clean cut with apparent precision. What else was uh, done to these, Dylan? A circular cut was made, removing the anus oh, and the external genitalia. That's where I draw the line. A circular cut removing the anus and the external genitalia. No signs of struggle, no blood spill. No footprints or tire tracks in the area around any of the cows. These are from six different herds, by the way. It wasn't like all from the same ranch. Really? Yep. What the fuck? So, See, but there's been other ones in other places. When I first started Googling cow mutilation, like the first thing that come up was certainly not Texas. Oregon. Yeah. Many it's places. It's happened in other places. It's creepy. The creepiest thing about it is the, um, and you always, this is what people emphasize, and this is why they think it's paranormal is the precision that is done uh, to remove whatever it is. Like it's it's clean. It's almost like it was a like, laser. Like you're saying this, they're precision pros. Freaking laser beams? Yeah, well, ra the rangefinder reference. Okay. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm a golf guy. The No Laying Up fans Shout out, out to Bush Mill. Oh, and and precision pro. Guy. No, I'm actually a, drop a pinned. The bag. I'm a pinned guy. Somebody just dropped the bag. It's called pinned. We talking aliens here, Davey? You <laughs> oh shit! I didn't even know we had this in play. Yeah. Oh yeah, buddy. It's you an think alien laser play. beams? I mean, Beow. it's like they're experimenting on these old fuckers, big fuckers. Aren't cow tongues like? Can't you eat cow tongue? Yeah. You can. I never have. Probably never will. But you can. Um, I probably would. I would eat it if prepared in front of me. What, what are they doing with the anuses? Truck? Oh, what if Will. it was a liver king? I it wasn't the liver king, anuses. David. By the way. Could have been the liver king. He lives in Houston. You see the picture of the liver king next to the normal-sized people? Yeah, he's always been short. He's 5'6". He's always understand. been short. Well, I understand that he's always been short. He, he didn't used to be tall. I get that part. But he's shockingly small. How do you know he didn't shrink? I don't. Yeah, he's like all natural for like 60 days. Is that right? That's what he's been saying. I don't know. I, I unfollowed him, finally. Honestly, so many too, other, yeah. so many people that I knew unfollowed him that I was like, oh, I'm like the only person like left besides like people in our group chat that's dedicated to him, Dave. <laughs> Shout out to. Uh, we don't talk about the, him anymore in there though. We just talk about weather. Pretty much, it's a good group chat. Um. Yeah, this is a uh, very very strange. Um, I don't really know if you if it was someone like okay, you can pretty much rule out. Um, predator because no sign of struggle and like if it was like a wolf or something or a, a mountain lion you know those are those are uh, you know it when you they they're eaten they, they don't just rip the tongue out cleanly the, the, yeah they, they don't, don't have precisely thumbs. cut out their buttholes either can i read yeah. something the latest cases recalled livestock mutilations included ones in the 1970s that instilled fear among ranches across the country at least 11 states including california montana pennsylvania and wisconsin Reported finding dead livestock with their sex organs and tongues missing, the New York Times reported in 1975. At the time, nearly 200 cows as well as buffalo, a horse, and a goat were reported to have been found with parts of their carcasses removed. The unexplained discoveries inspired a groundswell of theories, with some blaming the killings on satanic cultists who were said to use the organs for sacrifices, while others attributed the mutilations to UFOs. Can I um, take another aside real quick? Speaking of cults. Are you guys watching Yellow Jackets season two? No. Did never you watch season it. one? No. Okay. Never uh, we are on spoiler alert as well because, I, to be honest, Dave, I've uh, started it. Okay. Let me just say the I'm, trailer didn't sell. Me. I'm in season two now, and it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It's off the rails. It's good though, right? Like, am I making a mistake by going down this path? No. I, I am only one, one episode. No, in. no, no. You should watch season 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 one was good. I will say some of the novelties worn off for season two, but season one is worth finishing out. Weren't you more, you're more into that show, uh, Plaid Shackets. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's really good. Like, there was an episode that I almost dillened, meaning I almost stopped watching. Oh. Because of one episode. 
I picked back up last solo. Y'all should be proud of me. I'm not proud of you. Okay. Not proud Did of you. Did you get bullied into that or? No. I really enjoyed the show until the bottle one. Anyway, um, these cows, cattle, more than one, uh, no sign of struggle. They weren't like, they were already dead when the tongue was cut out. How are they already dead? Do they say? We don't know. They're going to have know. to test them. We don't know. So Madisonville is pretty close to College Station. You think it was I don't Aggies. know how close it actually it's probably was. probably Aggies. Do we think it could have been any pledges? Could have been some Aggie pledges. Mm. Right on 45. This is a weird story. I don't man. like it. No. There's a Bucky's right there. I, I don't know what this says about me, but like... If I hear about tongues getting cut out of cows, I need it to be messy, not precision. I think the, like one of the low-key weirdest parts of the story is that it came from f from several different places and mm -hmm. not all from the same ranch. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's weird. Yeah, I, I never, I didn't, I didn't go straight to aliens when I first heard about this story, but like now my brain can't go anywhere else. Dude, they were sucked up with the laser beams. We don't know if they did that. That's how that's how aliens take. Creatures from Earth, Dave. Looks like Madisonville's uh, down near uh, down around Centerville way. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, brother. Right near Cottonwood. Oh, right, right by Connor. Out um, Connor way. You ever been out to Elwood? <laughs> oh, have I? Where's? Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is too close for comfort. Even though it's you know a couple hundred miles from us, or I think we should. Miles. I think we should go check it out. Probably not. I'm out on that. Let's player. get boots on the ground. Some of Dave, the, look, Dave, go break it up. Do I have to wear boots? Can I wear my skate shoes out there? I'll wear my extremely white shoes. Your, your washable Rothies? Previous. Uh, that would segment. be a really good segue. Would be. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the case. Can I just say that uh, regarding the aliens, that some of the previous in previous uh, incidents in the 70s, uh, the ranchers spotted un unidentified uh, flying objects uh, the night that this occurred. Kind of just saying. I don't want to slight the ranchers from the 70s, but like, yeah. What, what do you have against the 70s ranchers? Yeah, I'm sure you guys did, for sure. Wow. For sure. It's, I, I stand with our ranchers. I do too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Fitbod. Let's hear from our friends over at Fitbod. We love Fitbod. Summer's just around the corner. Some of us, myself included, don't look the way we want to look. It's time to use Fitbod to get back in shape for those summer months. A lot of you probably had New Year's resolutions to get back in shape. Might not have seen anything happen from there. It's okay. We're not here to, we're not here to shame you. We're here to help you. If you're looking to take your workout to the next level, check out Fitbod. The Fitbod app creates a workout program that's personalized to your goals, your fitness level, and your available equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve. It's the perfect companion to help you crush your fitness goals this summer, and you can start making progress towards those fitness goals today with 25% off a of FitBot subscription. Just pick your fitness goal, select your equipment, and it can be nothing. When it says select your equipment, it can be absolutely nothing. You can just do body weight stuff. I'm looking at the uh, app right now. You're looking at the app, John, right now. I'm looking at the app. My next workout, we're targeting... My quads, my chest, my abs, and my lower back. Ten exercises they have queued up for me. Air squats, decline, push-up, burpee, dumbbell fly, jump squat, lunge, push-up, mountain climber, ab rollout, and finally back extensions. I'm going to be a sore puppy. You know what I'm saying? Arr Post a video. Video, record that. Yeah, dude. Shows, whole, shows just, your workout. Just the whole the whole thing? Yeah. 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 Go live if you're Added real. value. Maybe I will, bitch. The app switches up your exercises to avoid overtraining and burnout while keeping your workouts fresh and fun. Your program also changes based on your personal progress for maximized results. So whether you work out in a weight room or your living room, Fitbot, Fitbot has you covered. Learn new movements the right way with over 1,400 demonstration videos and a full year of Fitbot is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. There's no better time to level up your fitness habit. Try FitBod today. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at fitbod.me slash steam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash steam. Here we go. You guys familiar with Erwan? Uh, no. Leader of Turkey. 
No. Something else. Erewhon's a grocery store. Okay. In Los Angeles. Rumors are swirling. I don't know if these rumors have been confirmed or not, but uh, the store is going to move to New York. It's become somewhat of a famous little hotspot, Dylan. Okay. Very popular place to go get stuff that you would not find at a regular grocery store. They're not a regular grocery store. They're a cool grocery store. Okay. It's kind of like if you took Whole Foods and you were like, hey, how can we make this even more ridiculous? What can we do to do that? What can we do to make sure the salads are all like $25 a piece? What can we do to ensure that these smoothies are a million dollars a piece? A million. Wow. Yeah. One million dollars. Exactly. Move to Austin. And so... A recent article was written, and I, I read the headline. I thought to myself, like, <laughs> what's going on here? It's called, Meet the People Working Three Jobs to Afford Irwan. Oh Are you willing God. to work three jobs to go to the, the yuppie scum supermarket in your area? I'm not. And if one job can't get a, the job done, I'm probably going to go somewhere else. It's facts. What, what is so special? I mean, I, it sounds like it's very high quality, but is it something that I could not otherwise get at Whole Foods? Or uh, H-E-B. You mean like the keto brownie <laughs> that's literally five bites for $10, Dave, or a package of three peanut butter filled dates for $8? <laughs> wow. $10 for a brownie? Let me read you some things from this article, okay? I'm going to omit one person from this article because I don't think that she should have been included in the first place. Wow. I think she was wronged by this. I think this article was created for clicks, and I think that the reason that one of the people in this uh, article was going to Erewhon and working more jobs was because they actually were prioritizing their health and not just being a little insufferable. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah. You can go read the article yourself if you want to go do that. It's on the cut. Okay. I'm going to read you a quick passage. Are you ready for this first passage I'm going to read you? Spencer, 23, makes roughly $40,000 $40, annually as a freelance voiceover artist, content creator for a hummus company, and a college essay tutor. Dylan. Hummus company, dude. We can say hummus without no, being, you no, being about guy. it. No, dude. It's your super you probably, snack you've probably double tapped on one of these posts from uh, our friend Just Spencer. Just saying. I do enjoy hummus. I do enjoy hummus. It says... Uh, and this forces her to share a carpeted, unair conditioned apartment in Brentwood with a roommate. I'm not sure why carpet has to take a stray there. It seems unnecessary. Yet Carpet's she, coming back. She is not willing to give up her one luxury, Erewhon. Each week, she spends between $50 and $75, though sometimes she admits as much as $200 at the cult high-end health food store in Los Angeles, which has also become a social scene attracting TikTok wellness influencers and health nuts. Her favorite items include French squirrels, bizus. What is that? Do you guys mm, know what that is? B-I-S-O-U-S? I don't know what that is. No it's idea. a nutritious version of puppy chow for $9. The keto brownie that is literally five bites for $10 and a package of three peanut butter filled dates for $8 that she acknowledges could probably be DIY'd for less money. Quote, I've made jokes about it no matter what. It'll always be in my budget even though I'm a starving artist. It's become my identity. Those sound bomb. I just had to put that out there. Are you willing to say that these $8 peanut butter filled dates, uh, would you like them enough to make them part of your identity? No, but I would like to purchase them exactly one time to try them and then probably never get them again. Okay, what about um, a six pack of beer that is 100% woke free? I'm scanning their menu right now, Dave, and I'm not Take seeing ultra right there right now. Really? Not at Erdogan? Yeah. Not at the place that believes that nutrition is the key to a radiant lifestyle? That's facts. That's facts. I mean, here's the thing. $75 a week on groceries doesn't sound so bad. I mean, actually, like, yeah, it's like, uh, she clearly doesn't have a kid or yeah, anything to worry say, about. It's different, but still. Let me, let, me, let me read something else for you, okay? Okay. They went, they went to the store with Spencer, our friend. They said it's an uncharacteristic, I can't say the word. Characteristic. Thank you, Lee. Lee. Characteristically. Uncharacteristically. Light air one trip for Spencer. Also an aspiring wellness content creator who has come to collect her smoothie as a past yoga reward. Post yoga reward, I'm sorry. She weaves through the narrow aisle jam-packed with colorful, if not somewhat perplexing items like a $40 Neptune blue sea moss gel and $11 pea flour and turmeric bread. She leads me to the produce section and points to a 16-ounce container of crimson strawberries, which cost $24. This is Whole Foods, like, on steroids. This yes. is on, like, $12,000 worth of Liver King HGH. It's very optimized Whole Foods. Here's what she says about this $24 thing. This is probably my favorite quote from the entire thing. Uh, $24 what again? The strawberries? strawberries, yes. Okay. $24 strawberries. 
I would never buy that, she insists. Actually, I used to cut buy cut fruits sometimes. That was when I was dating my ex-boyfriend, and he would buy salmon for his dog here. You buying oh salmon god. for your dog at Erewhon? Oh my god. Man. Who are these people? How waspy can you be if you're just buying salmon for your dog at Erewhon? People are scum. Is it this is where is this located? Strictly New York? No, LA. LA. Excuse LA. Me, but going heard to of New it? York allegedly. Allegedly. It'd probably be a good move for them. It'd probably be a good move for them. Once Austin, Austin's going to get an Erewhon, and I'm no. going to, uh, that's when I'm moving. That's my cue. It's definitely going to happen. That's it's definitely going to happen. I'm moving out around yeah. Madison Bill way. <laughs> Simple life. <laughs> There's some more in this co column, which I highly recommend people reading. Uh, the other person they talk about uh, is someone who lives with her parents and works part-time jobs in marketing at a law firm and as a nanny. And it says that uh, she makes $50,000 a year. Nothing wrong with that. And she says, I love to take Air One when I'm flying because I freaking fly economy. I'm not a private I'm not private jetting anywhere, she says. Just to be in a comfortable sweats your Lulu fit and then have Air One, I feel like I'm worth a billion dollars. Okay, these people feel like they're not real people. There was a point when I was reading this where I scrolled up just to make sure it wasn't fiction that I was confusing. Because I, I don't understand why people would willingly open themselves up to a column like this where you just sound terrible. But then I'm like, I do this every day from a, for a job on a podcast. You know There's what? a name attached to it, right? Like they're not this, they're not, you know, anonymous. Uh, you mean Luba Kaplonskaya? Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, That's I can't, I, I can relate in some ways. I've been so hungover before I fly that I, I was like, you know what? I need a Fiji water. This uh, Ozark is not going to do it. Yeah. Imagine going into Hudson News and being like, everything here is not expensive enough. I need to go to Erewhon. <laughs> yeah, that, that $14 checks mix in the corner. I need more. Oh, my God. I, 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 need, to, I need to really financially struggle for the rest of the week. Uh, this person also notes that uh, she would get reimbursed for things that she purchased with the kids during her nannying. Uh, but she was told to stop going to Erewhon because it was too expensive. After a $16 smoothie experience. She needs to sit down with a financial advisor. <laughs> I feel like this is just a nationwide, maybe it's not nationwide. I know we live in a pretty bougie city at this point. Yeah, it's a worst. trend of like just overspending on stuff that doesn't need to be expensive. Like Brett was telling us about the new restaurant that just opened close to him and like everything. They don't have a happy hour. It's just people like to spend. It's like it's, it's a trend to spend money on overpriced shit. We should send them a link to the Dave Ramsey show. Your parents ever listen to that growing My up? My parents never did. Thank God. I don't, I don't, I'm not a big Dave Ramsey guy. Turns out if you go to a different grocery store that's less expensive, you can save money. Something you should think about. Facts. Dave. I don't I don't go to Air One. I don't, Thank I don't you, shop Dave. at Whole Foods either. Well, to, to close things out, they said back at the Air One smoothie counter, a muddy green concoction awaits Spencer. She gingerly takes a sip of her drink. Her face contorts in disgust. That's literally heinous, she says. Anus. It's like a combination. Oh, shh. Are they, are they doing cow anus smoothies no. at Air One? You said heinous with an oh, H. Sorry. Um, she said, it's like a combination of dirt water and grass on your shoes. She offers me a sip. It tastes like kale juice poured into a chalky mixture of vitamins and topped off with a few drops of peppermint oil. Quote, knowing me, I'm going to go to my car and make a TikTok reviewing it, she says. As I prepare to drive off, I see Spencer stationed in her car, retrying her smoothie for the camera. She repeats the same process as before, coughing and fanning her face. Not to be dramatic, but this was horrible, she reports to her followers. <sighs> At least she's able to admit that it tastes like shit. Credit to her for that. I think I would absolutely thrive in an Erewhon for a little bit. She she couldn't even get home before she made the TikTok. You like can't, immediately dude. when you get in the car, like first thing, before we even start it, like we got to fire up the talk. I hate, th I hate these people. Yeah, I genuinely I, don't want to be around anymore. This ruined it for me. This is my last show. What's up, guys? I'm Will, and this is what I eat at Erewhon every day. Okay, first things first. I walk in, and I say hi to the people that I know. Yeah. Then I go down the drink aisle, and I buy a beverage. Yeah. I hate TikTok. I'm sorry. China. <laughs> Facts. Ugh. Facts. That's all I have on this. That, that's that, I, that ruined my day. Thank I, you. I wish that's, I didn't know what everyone day. was. They're gonna. I, you're right. We are gonna get one. It's gonna go in on like a really nice part of Congress Avenue. Dallas will get one first, and then we're right after Dallas. No, maybe. No, I think we get one before Dallas. No offense, Dallas. We're more trendy than Dallas. Yeah, I think Arlington. Austin. I think Austin is a is a. It makes more sense for Air One. You think Whoa. they'll have one in Madisonville anytime soon? No. 
I don't. Yeah. Maybe out out Pecos way. Hmm. That's. Do you not, think Brett's gonna not, open an Erewhon in Pecos? They're not gonna get a. An He's Arowan. got the land or Pecos. four and a half acres. You got yeah, you're right. Parking might be an issue. I shared something from the circling back Instagram story the other day. If you guys uh, were looking at it, yeah, saw that. It's an yeah, interesting dude. opportunity. Yeah, we should start pitching Brett more uh, opportunities like this. All right, lads, it's been fun. Hey, fun episode tomorrow. Guys. Do you know it? A game show podcast hosted by Randy Trimbacki, Doug Dimmadome himself. Very excited for this. Uh, the rest of the week should be a fun week. Normal episode Wednesday. We've got voicemails Thursday. Do we have a coffee Friday this week? I think we do. I think we have a special guest coffee Friday. Oh, yes, we do. I think we got a coffee Friday. Who is it? Don't worry about it. Okay. We'll just have Brett do the eyes emoji on Twitter later. Okay. All right, guys. It's been fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.